Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Bull and Care. It's a two channel level recorder type 2309. If you check out the condition of this, I will call it brand new condition. <laughs> I don't even see, yeah, maybe I see a, a single fingerprint, but I mean, it's 50 years old and it really, really looks like it's brand new. Oh, that is amazing. I think I already said this quite a few times. I really love plotters, recorders, all those things. When you combine mechanics and electronics, it is just fantastic. So I like to play with this one so much. I can't even wait. And again, we got those a little bit annoying connectors. So that will be the two analog inputs. And what I find a little bit weird, of course, we got the, the input attenuators and all that kind of stuff and, and all those switches right here. You see, it's exactly the same for the two channels, right? Left, right. So you can move, that is the position. So you can move. We've got some different AC and DC and whatnot, attenuator and all that kind of stuff. That's exactly the same, right? Writing speed. How can the writing speed LF limit? So maybe this is a filter on the input that prevents the movement to be too fast. And then it say, oh, so this is a, yeah, I guess this is some sort of a movement filter, right? And then this is the recommended uh, speed limit of the, um, the recorder because the, the paper speed is set, of course, here in this unit. So, yeah, that, that is how it got to be, right? Otherwise, uh, and in the beginning, I thought this was the, the writing speed, but it's, of course, limits. And then... Here is the paper speed. All right, so this is how it is. And we got, of course, paper reverse and forward and pen lift. So that is probably, if you're doing pen lift, you're doing that with both of the, the pens. And they can, of course, move individually. I only got one pen. And this is, of course, old and dried out. So it's not going anywhere. We got a manual start, auto stop start continue okay and the power see a supply voltage that is something we're gonna go and uh, talk a little bit uh, uh, more about in a second and the cover release yeah that is ramp adjust interesting so the cover release and then you'll be able to get access to the to the paper and that paper is one full reel of paper <laughs> it is completely new so this just proves my point this unit wasn't really used that much let's look at the little pen i don't know if you can still buy those pens but I think you should maybe take it out and put it in a little plastic cover or something when you're not using them. And somebody forget, forgot that, so luckily I got one pen. So maybe I will be able to, to do something here. I don't know. Or maybe I can look this up and see if we can still buy them. So, whoops. They click in nicely like that. There's also a little magnet here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no magnet on the pen. See? There is no mating metal here or anything. So that's probably for some other types. Or this this. No, it's it has nothing to do with the pen lift or 
or that. I don't know what the magnet is for. Maybe some other pens. Let's look a little bit on the rear side. We actually are very lucky. We got extra input connectors and those are B and C. Lucky, lucky me. This is what I like. And that will be a battery holder. It says something here about battery and dry cells and not charging and all that kind of stuff. And I believe that will be some plug-in modules for different kind of amplifiers or stuff like that. It says logarithmic potentiometer. So we got some different modules here for that. Uh, remotes, remote output, external power, fuse and ground. Okay, so the problem is I am not able to find a manual of this unit. And that means I am not able to figure out the pinout of this power connector. Also, when I touch everything here, the whole bottom part here, it's super sticky, grossy. And as you can imagine, all this kind of battery slime went all over the place. And I need to figure out how many volts is this unit running on? Uh, what is positive, negative? Uh, no clue whatsoever. So that is going to be my first investigation. And of course I need to open and clean up and see what kind of damage we got on the, this unit. Also, there's another little thing. All the input text is also written down here. And I also see some holes here, so that means you can probably uh, bend or uh, mount this uh, connector module down here as well for whatever reason I don't know yet. So I need to, oh, yo, yo, I need to open and it's super gross and sticky and you get those, you know, those slimy fingers. Now we're looking inside and you can imagine the battery acids leaked out on this uh, bottom plate and this way transported itself all over the place to so that screw for example and it's here we go into all that oh yo yo we need to clean all this corrosion oh, look at that Oh, yo, 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 yo. That is not nice. And some of this is actually drippity droppity down in the switches here and stuff. So I better go and uh, do a lot of cleaning here. While I am trying to dig my way into all this super, super messy. Oh, look at that. How gross is that? It's almost looking like it's alive. Oi, oi, oi. And all this. <sighs> snesky, snesky here. So now I can't really touch what I wanted to show you. But remember, we had four modules up here. Logarithmic. Logarithmic. Pot meter. Potentiometer. So this is a 50 dB and this is a 25 dB. And here we have the active potentiometer. And look at this. So here is how it works. This is the active and this is the spare one. Let me show you. They look identical. That will be the resistor element. And in here we got the logarithmic features that makes this a logarithmic um, yeah recorder so the recorder is of course logarithmic uh, depending on the input right and then it corresponds to a logarithmic signal and that is done here by this pot meter and this pot meter is connected directly to the needle that makes the curve i mean this is definitely a way to make it accurate but I really need to mount the pot meters here again because I don't want to touch this or damage the little springy fingers. But, and as you can see here, we got a little bit of acid crawling it in up 
up here on the aluminium and I think this was the um, yeah this was the 25 and that was the one that was sitting here and I've been trying to look really really careful I can't see any acid damages uh, on this unit so I mean we are so lucky as we can possibly be that nothing crawled up and touched the pot meter but here of course I need to be sure that I clean everything here here's the two different resistors side by side so we can see the 25 and the 50 dB resistor networks if we look real careful we can actually see they cut can you see there will be some different cuts to adjust for the resistance and then they coated it when they're done doing the fine trimming oh, they can also cut on the other left or right or up down that is amazing this can't be cheap let's look a little bit more in detail now I got some more of the casing off so now we can enjoy the internal view of this fantastic unit there are really a lot of super super cool technical solutions in this one see this is the movement solenoid and I expect we've got a very long round magnet and the part that's moving is actually two coils and no iron core so it's a coreless linear drive because there is no like magnetic magnetic behaviors to, to feel here right so we got as you can see on this uh, flat cable we got four connections going to the solenoid so that is how it works and that magnet in here so there's actually another magnet and we got read contacts there's one here and there's another one here for the other channel so it's actually easier to see this magnet here going off there tickety tickety tuck so I don't know exactly why that is uh, necessary because it got a a pot meter here so it should know when it is down the end here all right so maybe this has this is going to the the amplifier circuit and that switch just prevents the drive to to that uh, linear drive also there's another solenoid down here and using this goes all the way here see this is the pen lift isn't that cool the way that this is done I mean you gotta be a little bit impressed <laughs> that is some nice mechanical solutions and we got some switches here so we know if this solenoid is uh, working or not I believe it's either pushing in or out or rotating or something like that but I can't kind of seem to be moving this thing how do I push this I don't really see anything happening maybe it's that one I don't know we'll have to see when I power this up and see if this is working or not but so far that is what I found out it's really really nice I am super impressed so I am done cleaning up I guess that will be the battery power input look there is a red and a white and they go over here and look at that what kind of lock is that it's a spat 
and then there is a little minus and a little positive. So white is positive and red is ground. Oy, oy, oy. That is bad, huh? And then this is a relay. Note the power resistor and that diode. Okay? So the diode points to the battery positive, and then there's a power resistor going to that pin of that connector. So that will be the charge for the battery just via a resistor and a diode. As easy as that, right? So battery voltage goes via a non-activated relay to the center pin here. And this is the positive output to the whole unit. They call it F. I don't know. So this wire here, or this pin, is the positive supply. That one goes to the other side of the relay, the non-engaged contact, the normal open contact. And then it goes to the coil. So when you activate the coil, the relay flips. And now you got external power input to the whole unit. It is that simple. So how many volts is this unit running on? Well, how about we just check out how many volts is this relay? I mean, isn't it six volts? So now we know how to power this thing, right? Six volts DZ. Ha, ha. What kind of research is that? Um, by the way, the other pins in this connector, I double checked with anything else here on the board. There's no connections to anything at all. So that is just how it is. That will be the start, stop, record and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that is, of course, connected um, to the flat cables. And that will be the two flat cables for the two motors. And that will be the flat cable for the solenoid. So yeah, now I can assemble all this and clean this up a little bit more. And then we can start to play. Ooh, the reassemble progress. Is one long progress. Progress, progress. <laughs> I don't know if you can remember the battery. Springy terminal here. Look how well that cleaned up. And both of them actually works now. Ha! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I could clean all that. So now I just need to mount this again. Shouldn't be that difficult. So I was about to assemble the battery connection here and then the red ground wire See, I added nice text here so it should be fairly easy for somebody else to continue um, using this uh, unit in the future I think that is super polite for the next one but look at that cable the red cable I tried to clean it up <laughs> as much as I could just for fun to see if I could uh, oh that is the the old end where it was soldered into that board uh, so that was of course okay you can actually see that there's some stuff in here as well so the entire length of this cable is just super duper corroded you can't you can't uh, solder it you can't clean it up at all so what I did is, now I'm changing to black, because I, I kind of, I really want a ground wire to be black. That is kind of how we do it today. Maybe you didn't do that in 1970s. I've seen red ground wires um, in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, red ground wires, man. It's bad, bad idea. But, well, that is how it was. So now I'm just going to change that. I'm going to keep the the white one. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know if you remember 
this little piece of steel down here was really green and and gross so I took it out and cleaned it with a little bit of fine sandpaper this is a springy steel so it's actually a spring and you can see here how bent the other one is so the idea is this is screwed here and then that screw adds tension so this is how those three boards on the input channel look at that so it's mounted by a spring to kind of push it like that i mean that is a really weird technique well well at least this is how they did it but why anyway i've been looking a little bit more inside this uh, unit and this is the paper feeder from the bottom side and then there's of course a step up motor and here you go with all the four wires here and four wires here i guess yes it is and they go to this board oh, let me get a little bit of light and all those tiny transistors here they drive the uh, the eight uh, windings and that will be counters and stuff like that for the different um, paper speed feeding i bet that is what it is That is a funny board. The other one here. That's just a little fielder. Not a lot on that one. So that would be the input amplifier. We got three op amps. And all the different attenuation and stuff. Yes. That is definitely a linear driver for yeah, for the for the motors. It's really beautiful laid out. Nice. Nice, clean, beautiful layout. That's well, not too bad. And that is the settings for the paper feed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think the only thing we need to do now is to see if this uh, works. So I'll just assemble the last few screws and then we're good to go nice and clean i think you can cut more or less eat from this now because i totally cleaned it so now this unit is reassembled and ready to be plugged in up here but i just needed to figure out how this pen lift mechanism is working and yeah i was looking really careful about this solenoid and now i figured it out let me see if i can show you guys this this is a rotation thing so there's a motor and a little gearbox in here so that is how it works you can hear it weep weep <laughs> i just love it's easy to figure out how stuff is made now i'm actually ready to do a first power up let's see if this blows up or what it does and here we go six volts and I see 27 milliamps so that is probably the relay so this is <laughs> red lamp 300 milliamps so far so good paper drivers in stop so paper Paper forward. Hey, let's go to. Yes! Paper is moving. Look at that. 
How cool is that? Paper drive stop? What about auto stop? I don't know how that works. It's probably just going to stop when it's <laughs> done with the sweep or something. How about... No. Ah, it's in standby. AC lock, DC lock. Signal. Oh, something is moving. So how is this left-right thingy working? DC. I don't see anything here. Stand by. And then it goes. Okay, good. Now we're happy. So what is plus lean DC? Oh, that's probably inverted. Oh, it's because I'm using a filter here, right? So let me crank it up to the fastest. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so let's let's try and input. Signal is input. Let's uh, turn on the... So this is a 1 hertz uh, signal, I guess. Yeah, this is a sine wave. So attenuators works. How cool is this? So that is one input. It's now up and running. So how is the other one working? Yeah, I see something. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> we are working in this. Yes, this plus, plus minus here is definitely inverted. But it really works. And it can, it can move really, really fast. And this is a... Uh, okay, let's try and run the paper. It's running. Look at that. Forward and reverse. Yay! It is working! <laughs> what a great day! Some really really nice curves. Oh, this is the stop. That this is what it's for. The auto stop. Hey, let's try and do that. How to stop? It's probably gonna stop when the when this when the sweep is done, right? Let's have a look if this is. Yes, it did detect it. How cool is that? That works too. Wow, what a super super good thing here. And then I can just start. So it is definitely detecting this because there is a dark dot here. And then there is a little sensor here, in here. And then it stops. Oh, ho, ho. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Now I'm gonna pack this. And look. This is of course why it is in such a beautiful state. Because it was always packed inside its original plastic rubber cover. Wow, that is some mint condition equipment, isn't it? Lovely.